experience was what would be classified as a psychotic episode. Um, but it was also my uh, spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. And it was also what led me into the field of psychology. So let me say a little bit about that. Uh, I was 23 at the time, and I had uh, been a graduate student in anthropology and uh, had gotten my master's degree and went through a kind of uh, crisis about who I was and what I wanted to do with my life. And I was very unsure about whether I wanted to stay in school, and uh, I decided to drop out and uh, started hitchhiking around the United States. And this was 1971. Uh, but culturally, it was still what we talk about as the 60s. And so, you know, hitching around the country was something a lot of people were doing. And mm -hmm. uh, I ended up in San Francisco and uh, just was finding places to stay and checking out the uh, Bay Area and so on. And while I was staying at somebody's house, I woke up in the middle of the night and just walked into the bathroom. Uh, and all of a sudden looked in the mirror and noticed that my right hand, I was holding it in this position, mm. and uh, it was giving off a white light. And I looked in the mirror, and uh, I had a sudden flash of uh, insight that the glowing hand meant that I was a reincarnation of Buddha. Mm. And then right after that, uh, it came into my mind that I was a reincarnation of Jesus Christ and that I had a mission to write a holy book that was going to unite all the peoples of the world. And I, I actually started right then and there in the middle of the morning. Uh, I pulled out my um, journal that I was keeping notes in and started to uh, write. I was uh, having conversations uh, in my mind with Buddha and Christ, uh, but also with people like uh, Locke and Rousseau, who wrote about how you form a, a social contract and create a new society. And I was reading um, Freud and reading Jung. I mean, talking with Freud and reading and talking with Jung in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I was also having conversations with uh, the uh, anthropologist Margaret Mead, and uh, also had conversations with people like Bob Dylan and uh, mm -hmm. Cat Stevens. And they were all helping me to uh, write this book uh, so that it could be uh, a popular book that would be read and that would be the foundation for this new religion. And uh, I spent about five days uh, during which I slept very little, an hour here, an hour there. Uh, and when I finished writing it, I uh, Xeroxed about 40 copies. I mailed off a bunch of them to friends and family all over the United States and, and actually went to uh, Berkeley and stood there on Telegraph Avenue and handed out copies of this to people. And uh, at that point, I thought I had uh, uh, done all I needed to do. And uh, these books would now start circulating around the world. Uh, in my mind, at the time, Berkeley was kind of the New Jerusalem it was the new center of the world. Mm -hmm. And so by distributing the books there, they would make their way around the world. And then at some point, I would be recognized as this new prophet. So um, at that point, I, I was pretty out there. And um, it was one of those experiences that could have gone either way, I think. Uh, I consider myself very lucky that I, in fact, did not get hospitalized. Uh, I had a number of very good friends who allowed me to stay with them, uh, fed me. Um, I had no money. Um, I think if I had ended up in the streets with no money, <laughs> I could have very well ended up in a hospital, uh, but I didn't. And I spent about two months in that state of mind. And uh, now I know that there is some research that people having first psychotic breaks, uh, there's a fair percentage of them. Nobody's pinned down exactly what the percentage is because the research is very hard to do, but 75% of people uh, would be able to go through these kinds of experiences uh, on their own. But 
uh, I was lucky in that I was allowed to do that. I was allowed to take this entire, you know, inner journey uh, all the way through to the end, to the point where I no longer believed these things. Mm -hmm. um, at which point I was left with this question, you know, like, what the hell just happened? Right. <laughs> How did this uh, Jewish boy who was raised in a fairly agnostic household, we were not members of a Jewish temple, uh, I never learned Hebrew or Jewish prayers or things like that. Uh, and I had never taken courses on religion in college or graduate school. You know, how did I come to think of myself as Buddha and uh, Christ? I mean, basically two people about whom I knew almost nothing. Mm -hmm. So I actually started to do a lot of reading about Buddha and Christ. In not only, you know, just who they were, but also um, what they are psychologically. So, for example, Jung views Christ as an archetype of the ideal self. Uh, so I started to read uh, Joseph Campbell uh, mm -hmm. and a number of other people to try to help organize and figure out what happened to me. I also went into therapy. I saw a Jungian analyst for about five years mm -hmm. to help me piece this together and make sense out of it. And it's ultimately what led me into psychology uh, but it's also what led me on my spiritual path. 